we are finally back now for episode number two of NHL Over or Under. And as you guys can see on the screen, there was almost 700 comments on the post. So obviously everybody's will not be featured in this one video, but there'll be many other more opportunities to get featured in a video like Deal or No Deals, another Over or Under, Agree or Disagrees and stuff like that. So what I did is I went through and I picked 10 for me to answer and then 10 for producer guy Phil to answer. That is who I will be collaborating on this video with. His YouTube channel, you can see it on the screen now. Links will be in the description. His arcade regiment he's a fellow nhl youtuber make sure to go subscribe to him and you guys know how this works you give a player name and a point total and i'm going to go through some and say if i think that player will be over or under that point total next year and without wasting any more time let's jump right into the video starting off my part of the video with a comment from overstorm 97 i had to pick a red wings one here and it is michael rasmussen 30 points over or under i'm gonna go over because i think once again he will be in the nhl full time and probably get some power play time as like a net front presence and it's going to be his second year in the league and I think he is going to take another step forward in his development. I'm a big fan of Rasmussen. I don't really know what his upside is. I think maybe like a third line checking slash scoring forward and like a power play specialist but still I think 30 points is definitely doable for him so I'm going to say over. Moving along to the next comment it comes from Chris the Great who says Jamie Ben 86 points. I'm assuming you mean Jamie Ben. It could be Jordy Ben. You never know but if I'm assuming it's Jamie Ben I'm going to say under on this. He had a pretty bad year in terms of offense of production I believe he had under 60 points and I think that is way too low for Jamie Ben and I think his point total will rise a little bit next year but I don't think it's going to rise that much so I'm going to say under I think he'll probably be around 70 to 75 points next comment comes from Brendan Pencock hopefully I'm saying that correctly who says Mark Stone 80 points I'm going to go ahead and say over I believe he had 73 points this past year split between the Senators and the Vegas Golden Knights and I think Mark Stone is going to be in for a career year he's only like 27 or 20 28 years old it's going to be his first time as the solidified number one guy on a contending team i'm super excited to see how he plays in that role and i think he honestly could be a player that puts up 85 to 90 points so i'm gonna say over definitely Moving along to a comment from Hatcher Kane, another Red Wing, Tyler Bertuzzi, 55 points. I'm going to say under, but I think it's going to be slightly. I think probably 45 to 50 points is more in the cards for him. He had a great year this past season, was a 20 goal scorer, and I kind of think we're going to see something similar. I can't really see him bringing that point total up too, too much from last season. So I think he will get some power play time and probably first line minutes with Mantha and Larkin. So, you know, just by default, he should get a decent number of points. So I'm going to say under, I think he'll be around probably 50 points. Moving along to a comment from John Mack, who says, Claude Giroux, 85 points now this is kind of a tough one because honestly I think he'll probably be around that you know 80 to 90 point range in between something like that obviously in the 2017-18 season he had a fantastic year 100 plus points but I don't really think we're going to see that again from Claude Giroux I'm going to say under but I think it is going to be slightly I think he probably will be up there around 80 points and you know pushing a point per game I wouldn't be surprised if he hits 85 plus but I think I'm going to play it safe on this one and go with the under Moving along to a comment from a name I'm not even going to try to pronounce, but you guys can see it on the screen. And they say Jack Hughes, 60 points over or under the number one pick in this previous NHL draft. And this one is tough because if you ask me how many points I think Jack Hughes will get, I would probably say around 60. So this is, you know, a perfect one to put in this video. And I'm actually going to say over, you know, just say F it because I think he is going to have a fantastic year. I think, you know, 70 points is definitely in the cards for Jack Hughes or maybe even more. But then again, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he has like a 45 or 55 or something like that you know point season and is under this but you know I'm just gonna say over because I'm a big fan of Hughes and I think he has all the potential in the world to put up huge numbers next year moving along to a comment from cheesy narwhal who says Zach Hyman 50 points now I know producer guy Phil will be interested in this one he is a Maple Leafs fan and I'm gonna say under but I'm gonna say slightly under like 40 to 45 points probably and I think a big reason why is because I'm pretty sure he's gonna be missing the start of the year from injury correct me if I am wrong Leafs fans but I think he is going to miss a little bit of time if healthy i would have probably said over because he's most likely going to be playing with john Tavares and mitch martyr and just by default you're going to get a lot of points so i'm going to say under but i think it's going to be very close i'm going to say slightly under moving along to a comment from tyler o'leary who says anthony beauvillier 50 points now i would not be surprised if he does surpass 50 points he has all the talent in the world did have a bit of a down year this past season in offensive production but i am confident that he will bounce back but i think it'll probably be more so like 35 to 45 points or something like that i don't think he's just going to jump right up to 50 plus points so i'm going to say under but i would not be surprised if he proves me wrong this next comment comes from david schmidt who says clayton keller 70 points now clayton keller is another 
guy who probably had a little bit of a disappointing year in terms of point totals this past season after his really good rookie season, but I think Clayton Keller is most definitely going to bounce back, especially now that they have Phil Kessel, and there isn't going to be as much pressure on Clayton Keller to give you the majority of the offense, so I'm going to go ahead and say over on this one, but then again, I could say under and, you know, slightly under because I think probably between 60 to 75 points is the range he's going to score in next season, but I'm a fan of Clayton Keller, so I'm going to say over on this one. And now finishing up my part of the video with another Red Wings one, I'm sorry, this will be the last of the video, but Tyler Jensen says, Philip Zadina, 64 points. I'm going to go ahead and say under immediately. I think Philip Zadina will have a strong rookie season, maybe like a 2020 player for 40 points, but I think 64 is definitely way too high for him, especially since he didn't look too comfortable in his nine NHL games he played this past season, but he did get a little bit better every single game. So you never know, he could pass this, but I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to be under by probably about 20 points. How's it going bros? It's producer guy Phil and I know you're thinking two things here. One, who is this guy currently talking to me right now? And two, why is he wearing a jersey in the middle of August? Number one, I do NHL EA like NHL videos quite infrequently but I'm about to change that once the season starts. And two, I've made a very, very big mistake in wearing this in August. It is actually freaking hot outside right now. Um, mm, mistakes were made. And you are here on my boy O Nyquist's channel, and he is an absolute legend. Thank you so much, dude, for having me on. This has been a long time coming, man. I've been a big fan for a long line. Yeah. English is hard. I've been such a big fan for a long, long time, and this is long overdue right here. I am so excited to be doing this over under video with you, man. And I've got a lot of great over under questions right here with a lot of good men, good players, and good pros, and I cannot wait to get into it right freaking now. Ow, oh, God, that hurt. That was a mistake. The Hockey Mathlete says Barkov, 100 points, and of course, over or under. Hmm, I'm not a Barkov fan. This is, this is just so refreshing. Mm, he needs more attention. But let's get right down to the nitty gritty. Listen, I love Alexander Barkov. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. I think he's one of the, like the most underrated players in the entire NHL. I will fight you if you disagree. He's a very good two-way player, uh, really good in his defensive zone, which I feel often gets very, very overlooked, and he's got a decent scoring touch, too. Potted over 30 goals this year. This year alone, he went up to 96 points. 96 points. So you know what? I like the guy. This might be some personal bias here, but I'm giving it the over, man. I'm giving it the over. He's going to hit over 100 points because he's a finished beauty and because he's got the talent around him, man. And Florida can do some damage this year now that they got Bobrovsky. It's going to be very, 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 very tight-knit in that East, man. And I think Florida can make some noise. And Barkov, he's going to do so by putting up over 100 points. You heard it here first. All right, next up on the list, we got the Ottawa Senators and Brady Kachuk with 60 points over or under. That's a very tough question because <laughs> is anybody in Ottawa going to get really over 60 points? Hmm, I don't know. But if there's anybody on that team who can do it, it's most likely going to be Brady Kachuk. However... I can't see him getting over 60 points. I feel like he's just going to get just under that. Like, he's going to get close to 60 because he's going to be the, like, heavy contributing offensive factor on that team. But I just can't see that team and that squad having anyone relatively over that. I mean, 60 points is a lot. Given he stays healthy, maybe. But I think he finishes, like, 57, 58 not quite 60, but that's still a jump up from last year, but I just can't see it. I'm so sorry, Ottawa Senators fans. Please, I'm so sorry. Just please forgive me. I know you go through a lot. Ryan 5 or 6, forgive me. Please, Senators fans. As a Leafs fan, I'm rooting for you. Seriously, I'm rooting for you. You guys have been through so much, but I'm so sorry. This one, actually, I think is going to be the easiest out of all of them, and I didn't really think it was going to be when I, I initially read it, and that is Matt Duchesne at 85 points. Mm, I'm taking the under decisively. Matt Duchesne doesn't really sniff close to like the 70-75 range. I mean he got 70 in what 13-14 but apart from that even last year on like Ottawa and Columbus and Columbus had a decent team after the deadline but I guess that's you know not enough room to make up some more points but historically he just hasn't gotten close to that. Now watch me be freaking wrong on all these. I'm going to eat so much crow as Louis would say. It's going to be ridiculous but this is one I feel quite confident in saying that he's not going to get 85. Maybe 70, 75, maybe, you know, he breaks a PB in points, but I just cannot see him 
getting to that 85 range, man. Hey, prove me wrong. Nashville, you got a good team. Prove me wrong. I would love to be proven wrong on all of these, but just can't see it, man. I just can't see it. Quickly, before we get to the next question, I want you all to do me a favor. Please go ahead, click like on this video, click subscribe on this video, give it a good old slap, give it a good old punch, get both those buttons a good old one, two, if you know what I mean, because O Necklace makes some elite hockey content. And if you're not subscribed, what are you doing? What are you doing with your life? You're watching me yell about hockey. That's, mm, don't know if that's a good life decision, but you know what is always a good life decision? Subscribing to O Nyquist. I approve. I will always approve. Ooh, this is a question I can really dig into, and that is Austin. Wait. <laughs> Guys, it's an O, not an I. We've been here for four years. Austin Matthews, breakout season, 100 points. Oh, would I absolutely just love to see that, but I have a feeling. This is going to shock you. Andy Pillock, Selena are going to hate me, but I just can't take the over on that oh my god he's just mm, i just for one like one season i just want austin matthews just to be healthy like i will take the over that he plays more games than he did last year but he just has to stay freaking healthy he's just gotten so unlucky with injuries over the past little bit and when he's healthy he is one of the game's most dangerous scorers which i never thought i would be saying when we drafted him he's supposed to be projected as what like a jonathan taves type but when we drafted him, I was like, oh, okay, you know, he's good. Maybe if he puts up 40, 50, 60 points. No, guy gets 40 Genos in his first season. Mm, sorry, what? 40 Genos? And then goes basically a point per game over the next couple seasons. Still not finishing in the team leading points, which uh, a lot of other teams are always quick to point that out when talking about Marner. Mm -hmm, but we're not going to go there right now. But Matthews, when he's healthy, can easily be a 100-point player. But the question therein lies is, can he stay healthy? Oh, I don't know. This is one where I would really love to be proven wrong. Like, 100%, please prove me the F wrong. Like, I would love to be proven wrong. But Matthews, I think, will get maybe 80, 90, just below 100. Just, just below 100. But he's not going to crack that 100-point plateau. I'm so sorry. I'm even wearing his jersey now, man. I'm so sorry. But mm, it's just, I think it's unlikely. This, this next one here is actually the most curious one out of like all the ones I've seen so far. And that is Ryan O'Reilly with 80 points. You know what? There's going to be one or two like picks on these where I'm just going to go so ballsy and so out of like, you know what? Let's just go for it. I'm going to take the over. That's right. I'm going to take the over because Ryan O'Reilly's points have been trending up. Think about where he played the last couple seasons. Okay. He started in Buffalo. Yowie wowie, not really the best situation to play with a couple years ago. They're on the rise now, but oh boy. And now he's playing in St. Louis. He's got some really good pieces there in St. Louis. A lot of good up-and-comers as well. He's, they still got relatively the core Stanley Cup team intact as well. And if Ryan O'Reilly like finds his offensive stride that he did, you know, in the playoffs, and he just carries that through the rest of the season, maybe he rides, you know, the Stanley Cup high, you know. He's still pictured and carried above his head and things like that. If he's still riding that high, then you know what? Who's to say he can't do it? Like, a lot of these things, who's to say they can or can't? But you're just asking for my prediction, and I think he is, man. And I can't wait to read the comments. This is going to be so fun. Like, that's the part I'm looking forward to the most, is just the comments. It's going to be absolutely amazing, bros. And I'm looking so forward to doing it, but I'm going to go off the ball. I'm thinking Ryan O'Reilly does it. 82 points. Maybe goes point per game. Write it down. Just write it down. Send it. We'll send it, write it down. That's it. This next one actually has me very, very curious. And this is the one I feel like I can be either, you know, really close to or just extremely wrong on. And that is Rasmus Dahlin getting 60 points. Now, Buffalo taking second best Rasmus in the NHL draft in 2018 was quite curious. But you know what? They got themselves a good player on their hands and 60 points. I mean, look at what he did this past season. What, nine goals, 35 assists? That's pretty good for a rookie, man, especially a rookie puck moving defenseman. He's a left-handed shot, too, um, which helps, I guess, in the power play. You can get those one tees. You know, he's a really good puck moving. gets those assists. You know, obviously, what, 35 assists? He gets his points, man, but 44 points this past year, 60. If anything, I'm going to take the over, but slightly. Like, over 60 is putting him into, like, elite defenseman category, and that's a ceiling. But, like, if anything, I'm taking slightly over 60. And I think he's going to pot a couple more goals this year, but assists are going to be his bread and butter. He's going to be lathering up passes, smooth and silky, and then his forwards are just, like, <clears throat> going to take a bite out of it. Jack Eichel's going to be eating some fine pumpernickel. Just, <clears throat> it's going to be great. But, yes, 
I think Rasmus Dallin does actually hit 60 points, but slightly over. It's going to be bellissimo. All right, so Timo Meyer was 75 points. The, the actually, I think the big question we gotta ask is, who is Timo Meyer's agent? Why hasn't he been fired yet? San Jose got a sweetheart of a deal out of him, and holy jumping! Whew, that is a great freaking contract, but I bet his next one next year, mm, mm, here comes the money. Yeah, mm, that's going to be pretty, pretty big, but Timo Meyer 75 points. Now, over the last couple seasons, he's been trending upward. You know, he's gotten in the 50 point range a couple times, but 75, that's mm, on a Sharks team. Like, mm, you still have Eric Carlson there, but mm, I don't know, man. I like the Sharks, man, but their, their, their window is just slowly going, especially after losing Pavelski. I mean, you know, maybe Meyer picks up a couple more of those points, but mm, 75, I think, is just a little too high. I'm thinking more in the 50s, 60s again, but 75, I think, is just slightly too much out of reach, and I probably just made an enemy out of everybody in the Bear area. Look, I'm sorry, the Raptors are the champions. The Sharks are regressing. You know, you had a good team. You still got the Warriors. You're still good. Curry's a monster. Just deal with it, man. Don't worry. Just be happy, man. You got this. But yeah, I just can't see 75 points. I'm sorry. Oh, okay, okay. This one is one that has me genuinely curious. Kale McCarr with 40 points. Now, <laughs> Kale McCarr is a beauty, first off, to start. I freaking love him. I love the fans bringing, like, Kale because it encourages both healthy eating and, you know, it's a nice little little treat, little like thing the Avs fans can have in common for one of their players, like the octopus or the catfish. It's kind of cool, you know, but 40 points, I say hell yeah. Hell yeah, this guy's getting over 40. I'm thinking he gets 40, 45, 50. You know, he, he could even be an early uh, Calder candidate. You never know. He got, what, seven points in the playoffs in 10 games, man? This kid could be the real deal, man. I really freaking like him. I think he's an absolute stud, and I'm thinking 40 points easily. He's got that Easily, man, especially with that avalanche team on the rise, dude. It's going to happen, man. Kale McCarr's an absolute legend. I love him. 40 points. No sweat, man. He's got this. All right, and to finish it off, we have Jake Gensel. 80 points. Oh, 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 oh. oh okay, okay. Jake Gensel, 80 points. Over or under. That's the question. Did Jake Gensel have the quietest, like, 40 goal season we've seen in, like, a while? Like, that was, like, him and Debrinket just quietly, just, you know, yeah, that was just absolutely nuts, man. Just had me over here, like, wow, that was mm, incredible. 80 points. What, he finished last year with, like, 76, I think, give or take. Ooh, ooh, is he a product of Crosby? Mm, that's the argument. Is he good in his own? Mm. Okay, um, I'm going to take the under. Yeah, I'm sorry, man, I just... The under 80 points is a lot. That's like elite winger territory, man. Is Jake Gensel really considered an elite winger? That's not a slight at him, but like, is that the overall consensus? Is he an elite winger? I don't quite know. I feel like he's going to get in that 60, 70 point range, but he's just not quite going to hit 80. Just not feeling it. Mm -mm, look at my watch. What's it telling me? No, not feeling it. Not 80 points a clock right now. Might be in a couple years, but as of right now, it's not 80 points a clock. Don't get me wrong. He's a good player. But does he really fit in the culture? I think he does. I think he does quite well, but he's just not quite an 80 point player. Sorry, Pens fans. All right, and that is it for me on this one. Once again, thank you so much, O Nyquist, for having me, man. This is an absolute gem. It's good old to rack the old brain noggin here and uh, talk about some hockey and, uh, you know, put me in some very difficult spots to have to think about. I quite enjoyed it though, and I want to hear your guys' thoughts. Please let me know in the comments. Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I got some of these right? Do you think I got some of these wrong? Do you think I'm an idiot? I don't know if you, I mentioned that. I think that's probably fairly obvious. But please, I want to read all these comments. Once again, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. I gotta stop doing that. It's really, really painful. Oh, Nyquist, you're a buddy of mine. You're a gem. Thank you so much, dude. Pleasure being on here. If you need anybody else, again, please call me. I really have nothing better to do with my life. Please, I'm very lonely. Hit like now.
So that is going to wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys did enjoy. I apologize it was, you know, about 20 minutes long, but with almost 700 comments on the post, I wanted to get in as many as I could. And I hope you guys enjoyed Phil's part in this video. Make sure to go subscribe to his channel, Arcade Regiment. I will link it down in the description below. You guys can tell he's a character. He's a very funny guy, and you definitely won't be disappointed if you go and subscribe to his channel. So with all that being said, I hope you guys all enjoyed today's video. If you did, please make sure to drop a like on it and subscribe to the channel for daily NHL content and I will see you guys all in the next video.